Brilliant Light Power has developed a new primary power source capable of replacing all forms of power on essentially all scales for essentially all applications. This new power source is 200 times cheaper than competing power sources and produces no pollution, including greenhouse gases. The technology is currently operating at commercial scale and is based on forming a more chemically stable state of hydrogen. The, um, the theory of um, the technology called hydrino power, it's, uh, the new state of hydrogen is called a hydrino or more stable state of hydrogen. It's, um, it was predicted theoretically by uh, applying classical physical laws to the solution of the electron. It solved the electron structure and for that matter, solves everything from subatomic particle masses to cosmological predictions identically in refutation to quantum mechanics. We've isolated this new state of hydrogen and characterized it by 23 spectroscopic methods at leading universities, academic, and uh, industry. The energy release is enormous, 200 times the energy burning hydrogen. Therefore, you can use water as a source of hydrogen fuel by electrolysis. The sun cell was invented to harness this new power source it comprises two major components, two molten metal injectors, and a, optical, uh, a special optical um, cavity or window. The two molten metal injectors inject molten tin, and when the streams intersect, a high current at low voltage is applied. It ignites a brilliant plasma that produces a higher power density than any known power source. This enormous light is transmitted through the optical power window and can be converted into electricity using uh, technology called concentrator photovoltaic cells. We have uh, proven the technology at uh, multiple uh, labs and leading universities and, and uh, by scientists over the years, and the, um, currently we're at 200,000 watts. We're running at commercial scale. Okay, this is, you wanna back it up one? Oh, back it up. Okay, I'm gonna hit it again. You gotta, you back it up again? Okay, if you hit, hit it, it'll play the video. Okay, now forward. Okay, hit again. Uh, it's not playing the video. Okay, well, in, in the insert, there's a, um, this is showing a high-speed video of, of the uh, plasma. It's about 5,600 degrees uh, Kelvin black body radiation, which is the same as the temperature of the sun. At that temperature, it emits tens of millions of watts per square meter. And you can see here the sun cell. We think it's one of the greatest inventions in modern times. It, uh, it'd be impossible to uh, transmit that kind of power if it weren't for optical. So we've invented a new technology that transmits that, that power optically. Next slide. So we'll talk a little bit about hydrino. Next slide. So where did it come from? That plasma shouldn't exist. So um, there's a fundamental postulate of quantum mechanics that classical physical laws don't apply at the level of the atom. That's not true. In fact, you can solve everything from subatomic uh, particles to cosmological parameters. 85 orders of magnitude of scale, that's one five by 85 zeros, an exact analytical expression. It gets back to the Bohr-Einstein debate that reality is, is exact and it is, does obey physical laws. Next. You can solve molecules exactly. This is an exact solution. You can image them by atomic uh, force microscopy, for example, shown here. Next slide. OK, if you play the video. You can, um, you can solve proteins, for example, insulin. You can solve DNA. These are exact solutions. Every single electron, every single molecular bond exact. Next slide. Uh, you play the video. This is a metal lattice, and on the, on the right you can see ionic lattice. Again, every, every solution, exact. There's no uncertainty. Next. You can, uh, the classical laws predicted acceleration expansion of cosmos before it was observed, and it, and it um, predicted the large-scale structure of the universe that now refutes and disproves Big Bang th theory origin of the universe. It actually shows galaxies all the way back in the Webb telescope data, and that was predicted theoretically years before it was observed. Next slide. So now look at hydrino theory a little bit, a little more detail. So you have atomic hydrogen transfers energy radiationlessly to an energy acceptor. It's a potential energy of hydrogen. Exact unit needs to be transferred. Causes the um, electron the, of the acceptor to ionize, and the hydrogen, um, hydrogen atom's electron transitions to a lower orbit. 
And that releases additional energy of 122.4 uh, electron volts, 10.1 nanometer cutoff continuum radiation. Next slide. That radiation is observed from all over the universe at five times more intensity than all the emitters combined. It's called the ultraviolet crisis. Another uh, indicator that what we're making is dark matter. So we make new compounds, and there's 500 spectral lines called the diffuse interstellar bands. They're seen all over the universe with no explanation, billions of dollars spent. They match the characteristic rotational spectrum in this new form of hydrogen. You can see in the top frame, and the, and the it, it matches what they call dark matter. So we believe what we're making is hydrogen to dark matter, releasing 200 times the energy of burning, making a pollutionous product that could uh, replace all forms of power. Next slide. A little about the sun cell. So you, can, you want to play video? So we uh, have a special optical cavity, and uh, this is not near as bright as it can get. It can get so bright at that distance, it'll break the camera. So that light comes out of that transparent uh, optical uh, chamber at millions, tens of millions of watts per square centimeter, or excuse me, per square meter. Next slide. So that can be incident in something called concentrator photovoltaic cells. So rather than paving over a farm, uh, concentrator photovoltaics involves using a farm of parabolic dishes about 10 meters in diameter, and it concentrates the light to about a thousand that light, uh, light intensity of the sun. It's incident the panels you see on the, up on the upper right hand corner and trans, um, converts that light, converts it from uh, optical to electrical, about 40% efficiency in the, in the field. Next slide. So in our case, we would uh, envelop that, um, that transparent uh, cavity, the optical cavity, with concentrator photovoltaic um, cells in something called a dense receiver array, would receive that light and, uh, and convert it into electricity. And we can get greater than the efficiency of concentrator because we can do something you can't do with the sun, and that is we can bounce back the unconverted light back to the plasma and recycle it over and over again, and you could get up to 85% conversion efficiency, which makes the cooling system and the system extraordinarily, extraordinarily uh, simple, reliable, it's extraordinarily safe, and um, an enormous uh, cost uh, reduction. Like I was saying, it's, it's uh, $20 a kilowatt, 0.1 cent uh, per kilowatt hour. Uh, we plan to electrify all power applications using off-the-shelf hardware. And um, next slide. We can transfer uh, the power to a um, inverter, and we convert it to AC load, or we can use DC directly. Next slide. The energy density is extremely high, a thousand times that of liquid or uh, solid fuels. For example, one liter of water has 55 moles of hydrogen. When you electrolyze that water, that has put current through it and converted it into hydrogen oxygen gas, that's enough uh, energy in that hydrogen released to power a Tesla 2,200 miles. Next slide. Uh, enormous advantages in cost, 0.1 cent per kilowatt hour, about 200 times uh, cheaper than any uh, conventional power source, there's no rare earths, there's no supply chain issues, no toxicity, no moving parts, and everything can be recycled. Next slide. Okay, looking at it, there's zero emission, it's safe, it runs at less than 1% atmospheric pressure, it's uh, incredibly low cost, no intermittency, uses conventional inputs, there's no harmful waste, it's easy to transport, it's autonomous, the fuels and grid infrastructure, easy to site, and there's no transmission distribution or demand charges and potentially not even FERC regulation. So you could drop this into anywhere. You could drop it into New York City. You can drop it into Africa, into anywhere. You don't need uh, fuel or um, transmission infrastructure. Next slide. So we could plug and play, go for heavy industry, commercial, industrial, heavy residential, big power loads initially, plug and play. Next. Use uh, conventional equipment like baseboard heat, um, heat pumps, uh, electric arc furnaces, off-the-shelf hardware, electrify all loads, thermal, electrical, and motive. Next one, slide. So, we'd, um, so all, this, uh, all this hardware already exists, electric vehicles, like electric trucks, cars, trains, there's uh, emerging aviation industry, all powered by batteries. We replace the batteries with something that would have uh, about 150 times higher 
power to weight ratio at this scale and stage than even the internal combustion engine is far superior to any known power source. And we can also, uh, in the interim, charge batteries and, um, you know, the EV um, existing technology, battery technology for electric vehicles. Next. So let's kind of uh, wrap it up. It's a massive addressable market. I'm going to go back to slide. Uh, you want to go all the way back to slide two. I think you skipped over that. All the way back, beginning. Because this is the most important, I think, point of the, the lecture here. I want to point out a big, right there, back, back. There you go. Okay, it's an enormous market, $16.3 trillion uh, a year market. It can replace thermal, electrical, stationary, electrical, motive, all, essentially all power markets, incredibly inexpensive, $20 a kilowatt, kilowatt not $2,000 a kilowatt, 0.1 cent per kilowatt hour on, the, on demand, on site, all totally autonomous. We can do total electrification of everything, thermal loads, electrical loads, and motive loads. This is the big point. So uh, climate impact. What's the impact on the climate? The peak power generation capacity of the world is 15 terawatts. That's uh, 250 kW units is what we're working on. Modular, scalable. You can scale it to any power and uh, aggregate amount. So you had 60 million of those. That wipes out the entire, that supplies all the power the world needs. Wipes out the entire problem. How much is that? 60 million is 60% of one year's world car production, and these things are far simpler. How much would it cost? $300 billion. That's less than the subsidies in the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022. So they're gone with the climate crisis. Okay, well, thank you for time, and uh, we look forward to bringing a greener world. Brilliant light power. Go to the last slide, you can see our. Um, our website, we got a link to our website if you want to follow our progress. You know, up here, up, one up, one up. Up, one more. You want to go back one? Again? There you go. So up in the uh, upper right-hand corner, brilliantlightpower.com to follow our progress. Just kind of give a summary of what I talked about. Thank you very much. Hey, awesome job. Real quick, gentlemen. Give it up for Randy, guys. Give it up for Randy.